I was born and raised here, in this canyon. I was to become a Watcher of the Veil like those before me, until I was taken by Shinra. Now that I'm home, and have repaid my debt to you, I plan to serve my village once more. I appreciate all that you've done for me. Thank you. We're really gonna miss you, Red. Oh, don't say that. You're only making this harder. I mean, I wish we had more time, but this is my duty. I suppose it was your duty to act the old man. I wanted you to treat me as an equal, not a dog. Not a pig! Is that you, my boy? Coming! So, was that goodbye? Nah, I'm sure we'll see him around the canyon. The real question is, why did we come here? To learn the secrets of planetology. Come on! Can't forget that materia! As for me... Ah, that will do. I'm gonna steal some shot-eye, if you don't mind. Then, we can see the sights. Not so fast. Sorry, but visitors aren't allowed in here. You see, this is where we keep all our valuables. These are the friends I was talking about. <laughs> Thank you for looking after Mama Jin. My name is Wolkenhagen. I teach planetology here in the canyon. One could say I know a thing or two about our world. A thing or two? I doubt there's a thing or two you don't know about it. <laughs> Well, it might seem that way to a child like yourself. I'm not a child anymore. I'm 48. 40 what? <laughs> <laughs> Nanaki here has a long life ahead of him. In human terms, I would say he's about 15 or 16 years old. That's more than old enough. I can protect our veil and everyone in it. Which is more than I can say for my good-for-nothing father. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of the members of our little community, have you announced your return to one and all, Mama King? Not yet. Be right back. Hmm. <laughs> but where are my manners? Please, come in and have a look around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Anarchy never had much exposure to the outside world. I can only hope his travels with you have served to enlighten him. That records fluctuations in various energies. I must ask that you handle it with care. It's a rather delicate device, you see. collection of our planet's memories. And yet, it's like you're singing to me of the planet's mission. Don't you worry, my dear. That's a scale model of our planet and the surrounding stars. One could say the dust it's collected represents the people who live upon it. are testing the pull of gravity. Here we seek to gather the wisdom of the planet. detectors ever built. Hmm, though I suspect it can't detect much now. <laughs> Let's not be hasty. I'll show you that room later. the power of the wind to produce new airflows of its own. Perhaps you've encountered them before during your travels. telescope on the planet. With it, you can see to the edge of the galaxy. There's no better view of the stars than through this scope. <laughs> but the lens could do with some cleaning. My apologies. The 
lights we observe here have traveled to us from the far reaches of time and space. To gaze at the stars is to gaze into their past. of late. This tubing allows us on the surface to hear the inner voice of the planet. What we just heard didn't come from the planet, though. That was definitely the voice of a weapon. Hmm. You seem awfully sure of yourself, miss. Because we saw them with our own eyes. Two, in the Corel and Gungaga reactors. They were loud and huge. <laughs> Fascinating account, were it true. However, such grand delusions could be a sign of Marco poisoning. Do see a doctor. Um, excuse me? Oh, oh. Yes. That would do them some good. <laughs> Judging from everything you've said, the three of you are unfamiliar with basic planetology. But it is never too late to learn. Please, come with me. I present to you our planetarium. While the Shinra building features the latest iteration, this particular one is my original design. Now then, without further ado... Only the beginning. The shooting star! Planetology is not simply the study of the cosmos and the celestial bodies that dwell in it. Rather, it is a quest to comprehend the cyclical nature of life. ebb and flow that is the life stream. An apt name, though it is as much a reservoir as it is a stream, being the sum of the planet's spiritual energy. It is the very essence of our star, 
the blood coursing through its planetary veins. And if ever that essence were to be entirely depleted, of planetology. So you're saying that Mako is spiritual energy, which we're using up? Just so. Siphoned from the planet and processed for industry, that energy can no longer fulfill its true purpose. It is fated to fuel man's machinery, then fade away. Okay, but does it actually fade away? I mean, what if it doesn't? What if it just returns to the life stream in a different form? Is that possible? A novel theory, suggestive of a lack of understanding. Hmm. However, that can be overcome with time and education. You rang? Please escort this young lady to our seminar room, would you? Right this way. Okay. Hey, can I come? Got a question. Planet runs out of energy. It and everything on it dies, right? Yes. There any way to avoid this? Like, making the spiritual energy stronger? Why are you asking me such things? <coughs> I'm sorry. I've come to realize that I'm somewhat stuck in the past. We've entered an era in which humanity exerts unprecedented influence over its environs. And as both the planet and society evolve, so too must science. And yet it seems that I cannot. Perhaps I'm much too old of a dog to learn any new tricks. A seminar is in progress. Please I've uh, always been on the bigger side, but... Please, continue on into the assembly. Painting and poetry are more my thing. My old man, he... He used to say it was a waste, me spending all my time indoors. According to him... What about you, miss? You must have a story to share. Please. Me? Uh, okay. I, uh, where to begin? I fell into the life stream. I don't have words to describe it, except beautiful, maybe? It was a lot to take in. Feelings of kindness washed over me. Long forgotten memories came flooding back. It was a warm, comforting place. But. There was also conflict. A war between the planet and its enemies. And I can't... I mean, we can't let them win. We need the planet, and it needs us. We have to rise up, fight back, defend it from this terrible threat. Thing is, I don't know how to do any of that. And I hoped you might have the answer. <sighs> I, I'm not criticizing planetology or anything, and I'm not trying to scare anybody either. I just... 
You know... Never mind. This is all coming out wrong. Please, do not be discouraged. Should you ever wish to try again, we would be more than happy to listen. What matters is that you keep challenging your beliefs. Stop doing that, and the answers will forever elude you. On that note, I think we should adjourn for the evening. The River of Lights is almost upon us, so let us head to the torch. See you at the festival. The River of Light ceremony will begin shortly. This night comes but once a year, bringing us closer to the planet. I've no doubt you'll feel her grace. Ah, the River of Lights. Once a year, we gather the souls that have drifted to our Vale and return them to the planet whence they came. I heartily encourage you to join us in this ceremony. I'm certain, however, a veteran mercenary like you would never... Look at them, gathered around the fire. Just like us that day. Me, and Mom, and Dad. If only we could do that again. Uh, never mind. Just forget I said anything. I'll lend an ear. Whenever I think about my mom, my chest swells with so much pride, I, I feel like it'll burst. But when it comes to my dad, I just... Sorry, I can't. Still not ready. Wow, so many tourists. Did I sound as awkward as I felt? You did good. Can't help it if they suck at listening. I got what you were saying. I kind of wanted everyone to get it, though. To hell with everyone. <laughs> Great advice. Thanks. I had the pleasure of talking to a mentor. Said it was presumptuous of me to think I could save the planet. She decides her own fate, you see. As rain cleanses the skies, so too does she cleanse herself of filth. So what? We sit here and theorize while the planet rinses and repeats? No, we fight, but nothing will change. That's what I said. I knew you'd see it my way, Merc. Thanks. Wow, so many tourists. Must be quite the festival. When you die, you return to the planet? That has literally got to be the dumbest thing I have ever heard. Once you die, that's that. Yeah, I totally agree. What? Ugh, should have known better than to get philosophical with you. Man, I can't... Some say we're like grains of sand on the beach of the universe. Fatalist idiots. Spend my whole life trying to prove them wrong. But sitting here, looking up at the sky, you kind of help feeling pretty minuscule.
So, I'm an ancient, as in a steward of the planet, one of those ancients. Or, to be more precise, the only ancient. For the most part, it's been a source of pain. I've been held against my will. I've been watched. I've been ignored. Even hated. And it's been that way ever since I was little. My blood's been nothing but a curse. If I ever started to forget, something would remind me of what I was and bring me crashing back down to Earth. It was always the same. Time after time. I'd be shown a glimmer of hope, only to have it snatched away. I was never gonna be normal. That much was clear. It's okay. <laughs> so my blood's been a curse, but it's also been a blessing. It's brought some wonderful people into my life, friends that I love. And for once, I think I'm okay, happy even. And all that pain feels worth it. Even if I can't lead a normal life, there is one thing I can do. Return their kindness. And try to make the most of what I've been given. It is time! <sighs> Whoa! <laughs> Pretty sappy, huh? Every word, though. 